In this video, we'll discuss Hermitian operators and the caveat that all operators in quantum mechanics must be Hermitian. So we'll start with the fact that measured properties must be eigenvalues, which we know from uh, postulate three, I believe. So if we have an operator, which corresponds to some observable property, energy, position, momentum, etc., the operator acting on our wave function giving a constant times the same function means that this wave function is an eigenfunction of that operator. And this value here is the eigenvalue. So this eigenvalue is some, uh, some number, some constant, some scalar. All right, so the expectation value of A, or the average value of A, if it's an eigenvalue, we saw was the integral of psi star times the operator a acting on psi integrated over all space integrated over all real numbers and that is equal to the integral of psi star so a psi is equal to little a psi so we can substitute little a in there little a is a constant so we can we can factor out little a so we get the integral of or we get a times the integral of psi star psi over all space and if our wave function is normalized, the integral of psi star psi over all space is going to be 1. That over all psi star psi d tau is the probability of finding the particle at a certain point in space. Integrate over all points in space, there's a 100% chance we find it somewhere, or a probability of 1. So that gives us a times 1, or it just gives us the little value a. So if our wave function is an eigenvalue of this particular operator, or if our wave function is an eigenfunction of this particular operator, the only value we can measure is the eigenvalue of that eigenfunction for that operator. Okay, now we have the extra restriction that physical observables must be real. Energy doesn't have an imaginary component. You can't, uh, the position isn't measured times the square root of minus one. Momentum doesn't have an imaginary component. All these things we measure have to be real for all physical properties. So that means these eigenvalues, which are all the things that we can measure, all the values we can measure, need to be real. They need to belong to the set of all real numbers. So that means that A, the eigenvalue, must equal its complex conjugate. There must be no imaginary component that way, you equal, your, you equal your complex conjugate when you are a real number. Okay, so if we take the complex conjugate of this entire equation here, we'd have a star acting on psi star n equals a n star times psi star n. All right, so if we multiply this equation times psi n and integrate, we get that the expectation value or the complex conjugate of the expectation value of A is equal to psi A star psi star integrated over all space. Notice how this is the same equation as up here, but all the stars and non-stars have been inverted. That's going to equal psi times, substituting in A star psi star, gives A n star psi star. And once again, A n star is a constant. We can factor that out we get the integral of psi, 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 psi star d tau. So what we have there is the same integral there. Multiplication is commutative, so integral of psi star psi is the same as the integral of psi psi star. That is also equal to one. So this whole result is one times a n star, or a star, which as we saw from this must be equal to a. So that means because a star is equal to a, the complex conjugate of our expectation value must equal the expectation value. And that means that this integral must be equal to this integral. So that is the definition of a Hermitian operator, is if the integral of psi star a psi is equal to the integral of psi a star psi star. If that's true, then the, the complex conjugate of our expectation value is equal to the expectation value, and our expectation value is real. So if this is true, 
we get real expectation values, real eigenvalues, and this corresponds to a measured property uh, that we can have assurance that it's not any kind of imaginary number. All right, so that all seems very abstract in terms of the algebra. We're going to use this a few times in this playlist for deriving some results, but mostly it's more of a fact to be aware of than necessarily something to uh, take advantage of uh, frequently in calculations unless you're planning on going into quantum mechanics uh, as a field of study or looking into more advanced stuff. So as I mentioned, for eigenfunctions of a given operator, we have the integral of psi n star a psi n over all space equals the integral of psi n a star psi star n. That's true for eigenfunctions. This is also more true for Hermitian operators for a general function, integral f star of x a f of x with respect to x is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity again, f of x a star times f star of x. So it's true for any function of x, even if it's not an eigenfunction of the operator a. And we can even do this with two different functions in the most general form of this equality. The integral of fm star of x times a acting on fn of x is equal to the integral of fn of x times a star acting on fm star of x. So even if fm and fn are different functions, this is still true and is, and is an appropriate definition of what makes an operator Hermitian such that the expectation values are real, their complex conjugates equal each other, and they, can, and they get real results which give us measurable properties, physical observables, which do not have imaginary components.